In the last class, we have discussed about entrainment or jet flooding. Now, in this class, we are going to discuss about downcomer backup flooding and downcomer choke flooding. Now, before I start our topic, that is downcomer backup flooding, let us try to figure out the liquid level inside the downcomer in a distillation column or in a tray column. So basically we are interested in finding downcomer level. Okay. Now this is a this is a typical schematic diagram of a tray column in a distillation or any absorption column. Now here what we find that the pressure pressure of vapor below this tray is Pn and pressure of vapor above this tray is Pn minus 1. And we know that whenever a vapor passes through a tray, it pre pressure reduces. So it means Pn minus 1 is less than Pn. Okay. Now, <coughs> it means that the pressure above this down common level is Pn minus 1. And this down common fluid has to flow to a region where pressure is Pn plus this liquid head. Okay. So it means that downcomer liquid has to flow from this low pressure region to high pressure region. Now how can a liquid will flow from a low pressure region to high pressure region? <coughs> the answer is actually liquid always flow from high head to low head. It doesn't flow from high pressure to low pressure. Though usually in a horizontal straight pipe when pressure is high then usually head is also high and that's why in horizontal a state pipe you know, liquid flow from high pressure region to low pressure region but it in reality uh, any fluid may flow from low pressure region to high pressure region if head is higher at low pressure region than head at higher pressure uh, higher pressure region so here what happened <coughs> pressure at this point is pn minus 1 which is smaller compared to the pressure at this point where liquid has to flow it means that the level inside the liquid should be sufficient enough to develop enough pressure such that the uh, uh, pressure at this point become higher than the pressure at this point then only the on this horizontal level liquid will flow from this point to this point okay so the level inside the downcomer will basically go on by the hydraulics i mean tray hydraulics it means that if tray pressure drop goes high then liquid head required for developing sufficient pressure will also goes high. Similarly if the level on the tray where liquid has to flow goes high then again downcomer level will go high. Again one more point whenever a liquid or whenever any fluid exit from any uh, uh, any pipe or any uh, for example here in this case downcomer then there will be an exit loss we have uh, uh, studied about this entry loss and exit loss in our fluid mechanics course curriculum so <coughs> so when, uh, when downcomer liquid will exit from this downcomer then there will uh, be a loss and that loss we should also be compensated by this downcomer level okay so usually we find find that uh, the exit loss usually used to be proportional to the square of velocity so when velocity of downcomer liquid uh, which is exiting from the downcomer goes high then this exit loss will be high and that head should also be developed by this liquid downcomer liquid so based on this understanding i can uh, summarize all those things that the liquid level inside the downcomer will be sum of four factors one is liquid escape velocity i mean liquid exit velocity when it goes high it means head loss or exit loss goes high it means level inside the downcomer goes high i mean the level required to develop uh, sufficient pressure goes high so higher level will be inside the downcomer so this is also called head loss under downcomer apron Again, wear height, when wear height goes high, then liquid level on the tray where, uh, where the downcomer liquid has to flow goes high, it means uh, liquid level inside the downcomer goes high. Similarly, crest height, crest, if crest height is high, then downcomer liquid level will be high. And crest height usually depends on the flow rate of liquid. So when liquid flow rate goes high, then downcomer liquid level will also goes high. And the last is the tray pressure drop. 
that if tray pressure drop is high then down comer liquid level will be high so if i <coughs> write this uh, all these parameter numerically then i can write down comer liquid level uh, zc that is liquid level inside the down comer in terms of clear liquid will be equal to level of liquid on down comer uh, on the tray where liquid has to flow from down comer plus the tray pressure drop plus the head loss due to exit i mean exit head loss now tray pressure drop as we have discussed can be written as dry tray pressure drop plus hydraulic tray pressure drop and hydraulic tray pressure drop usually uh, becomes equal to the clear liquid head on the tray and that will be equal to beta times hw plus how so if i write ht in terms of hydraulic tray pressure drop and a dry tray pressure drop then i will get this expression now this height inside the down comer is in terms of clear liquid now usually the liquid inside the down comer is not clear because we have discussed that whenever liquid go flow inside the down comer it carries some vapor also inside that it and because of that reason the liquid inside the down comer is in the form of froth so the the actual density of liquid inside the down comer is smaller than the clear liquid density and because of that liquid level inside the down comer will be higher than the than the uh, than the liquid level given by this expression so if i want to uh, know the actual liquid level inside the down comer then we have to uh, adjust by some aeration factor which will be uh, which will depends on the uh, vapor carry over by the liquid inside the down comer so if i ad will adjust then i will get the actual liquid height which will be equal to clear liquid height divided by some aeration factor which usually remains less than 1 so clear liquid height will be higher than uh, sorry actual liquid height will be higher than this clear liquid height so what happen if if my clear liquid height goes high it means my actual liquid level goes also high now in some cases if pressure drop goes high or liquid level on the tray goes high or exit loss goes high in all these cases what happen the height required to develop the pressure also goes high now in extreme case when this height become equal to the tray spacing plus this wear height then what happen this down comer will be filled now in that case the liquid on the above tray will not flow in this uh, in this i mean it cannot flow in this down comer and this condition is called down comer backup flooding so you got my point <coughs> a liquid level required for due to hydraulics of tray uh, inside the down comer a liquid level is required and if pressure drop or tray uh, level or exit loss goes high then liquid level required inside the down comer goes high now if in in extreme condition if level becomes equal to the tray spacing height plus wear height then liquid from the above tray cannot flow inside the down comer and the tray becomes flooded and this flooding is called down comer backup flooding it is also known as liquid flooding uh because it usually happens at high liquid flow rate uh, we are going to discuss about this so <clears throat> so as we discuss in entrainment flooding that uh, what are the factors which affects entrainment flooding let us now discuss about uh, factors affecting down comer backup flooding i mean uh, in what condition this down comer backup flooding will take place okay so down comer backup flooding usually take place in high pressure system why in <coughs> see we have discussed about the liquid which is going inside the down comer may carry some vapor but whatever vapor which carried by liquid what happen this vapor disengage before before liquid goes to the below tray now this vapor disengage why because there is a density difference between liquid and vapor and because of that reason the liquid exert a buoyancy force over the vapor bubbles and because of this buoyancy force this vapor disengages and goes back to the above tray now if now what happen when pressure increases then the density difference between the liquid and vapor goes very small and because of that reason the buoyancy force also goes 
small and because of that buoyancy force small then vapor disengagement rate goes low and because of this more difficult separation downcomer radiation increases i mean radiation factor goes uh, i mean more radiation and because of that actual height inside the downcomer goes high and because of that reason a froth back up in the downcomer there is another reason that what happens whenever there is bubbles of vapor inside a downcomer it also provides some frictional losses because bubbles restricts the flow of liquid so because of these two re reason frictional losses and the high aeration the liquid level inside the downcomer goes high and downcomer backup flooding take place okay similarly when liquid flow rate goes high i mean if you are increasing liquid flow rate inside the column then what happen it increases tray pressure drop because of uh, high liquid level on the tray also it increases tray liquid level and there will be high friction losses or high exit losses so all because of all these losses liquid level inside the downcomer goes high and because of that downcomer backup flooding okay so usually downcomer backup flooding it take place in high pressure system at high liquid rates okay now in sidan and hanley it is written that typically downcomer flooding is only critical at high pressure and it rarely uh, rarely dominates if the downcomer cross sectional area is at least 10% of total co column cross sectional area and if tray spacing is at least 24 inch i mean if downcomer area is high then the downcomer velocity will goes low exit losses will goes low and because of that reason chances of downcomer backup flooding goes low similarly if tray spacing is high then even if liquid level goes uh, increases in downcomer then also chances of backup uh, downcomer backup will be low so because of that reason it is written that in, in only at high pressure and high liquid flow rate this downcomer backup flooding uh, may take place but <clears throat> this is written in sidan and hanley this is not uh, always true it may be possible that even at lower pressure system i mean low, not very low moderate pressure system uh, it may it may be possible that this downcomer backup flooding may take place so we have discussed discuss about factors affecting downcomer backup flooding we have also discussed about in last lecture uh, factors affecting entrainment flooding now in this uh, diagram uh, i have taken this diagram from henry and kester book kester book and in this diagram all these factors has been summarized now this diagram is for general guidelines only actually flooding in any column uh, may depends on the tray geometry and the downcomer entrance geometry all those parameter also affect flooding so this is just for general guidelines and here what you can see that at high liquid flow rate and at high pressure flooding is usually because of downcomer flooding similarly at low pressure and low l by v ratio i mean where volumetric flow rate is high and liquid flow rate is uh, low volumetric flow rate of vapor is high and volumetric flow rate of liquid is low in that case usually flooding is by spray entrainment flooding because uh, as we have already discussed in last lecture now at moderate pressure and moderate l by v ratio any of the flooding mechanism may take place there could be froth entrainment flooding if uh, tray spacing is a small and uh, uh, and uh, i mean froth height goes high in that case froth entrainment flooding may take place now if uh, 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 usually usually what happen when there is a moderate l by v ratio the tray as uh, regime i mean the flow regime on the tray usually in terms of uh, usually in the form of froth so what happen usually when l by v ratio more remain moderate and pressure remain moderate in that case if tray spacing is small then froth entrainment flooding and if tray spacing is high and if you are increasing vapor velocity then froth regime may convert into spray region and a spray entrainment flooding may also take place similarly uh, if uh, the pressure drop uh, uh, becomes high around the tray or the tray spacing is also low then this downcomer backup flooding may also take place so all these type of uh, uh, flooding uh, may take place in uh, uh, low uh, i mean moderate 
pressure and moderate alveoli V ratio. Okay. Now we are going to discuss the last type of uh, flooding and that is called downcomer choke flooding. And this is basically a function of downcomer entrance condition. What happen? Uh, uh, what happen if my downcomer entrance area? I mean this area where liquid is flowing over the from over the weir to this downcomer. If this downcomer area goes low, then what happen? The velocity of liquid which is going inside the downcomer goes high. Or it may also be possible that uh, that area of downcomer is sufficient but liquid flow rate is very high then also the velocity of liquid which is going inside the downcomer goes very high now <coughs> now when downcomer liquid flow rate goes high then what happens it do not provide sufficient uh, residence time for vapor disengagement and because of this low vapor dis disengagement uh, it creates a low density and because of that froth volume goes very high so what happened the liquid which is going inside the downcomer the vapor which, uh, which is carrying by the carried by the liquid is not able to disengage and because of that reason this vapor bubbles provide frictional resistance and because of that reason liquid simply cannot flow through the downcomer so what happens it is like downcomer has been choked okay and because of that reason liquid has to back up and uh, uh, and this causes liquid accumulation on the tray above and because of that reason column gets floods so this is the one uh, uh, explanation given in henry and kister in another explanation it is written that downcomer choke occurs because the top downcomer area is not large enough to concurrently separate the vapor and allow liquid to flow into the downcomer okay now similarly in another sources it is written that if downcomer entrance area is not large enough then what happened the vapor which is disengaging through the liquid what happened it restrict the flow of liquid inside the downcomer i mean suppose this suppose this area is very small now what happened the vapor which is coming out from this liquid by disengage disengagement it is basically restricting the liquid which is going inside the downcomer so it is like the downcomer mouth has been choked and that's why it is uh, written that choked downcomer mouth so whatever the explanation may be usually downcomer choke flooding is a function of entrance uh, downcomer entrance condition if downcomer entrance area is sufficiently high then this choke flooding will not take place or it uh, uh, this choke flooding will not take place so usually in well de uh, well designed column this uh, downcomer choke flooding usually do not take place similarly in well designed column when tray spacing is sufficiently high then froth entrainment flooding usually do not take place so because of that reason in many book uh, flooding is usually defined as, as two types that is a spray entrainment flooding called as entrainment flooding and downcomer backup flooding or liquid flooding so so in most of the cases there are only two types of flooding in well designed column so because of that reason we will also restrict ourselves and whenever i call entrainment flooding i mean spray entrainment flooding and whenever i call downcomer backup flooding that is liquid flooding okay so i'm going to stop my discussion at this point only i have given all this uh, uh, information uh, from this book uh, these books uh, by normal liver bands also i have taken uh, uh, some of the materials from henry kister books cedar and henley books mckeb and smith book and various other papers available on google so i want to give credit to all those uh, sources now in the in the next class we are going to discuss about uh, uh, about the flow i mean what are the operational uh, limits for a distillation column to operate uh, uh, in uh, in safe region i mean to avoid flooding and weeping so all these uh, things will be discussed in uh, next uh, uh, tutorial we will also discuss about turn down ratio and uh, we will also discuss about what will happen when we, when i increase or decrease my liquid flow rate or vapor flow rate in terms of mass transfer because till now we have discussed only about hydraulics 
and in the next class we will combine hydraulics with mass mass transfer so thank you